Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two-player game TAC, designed by James Ernest and Patrick Rothfuss and published by Cheap Ass Games. TAC was first mentioned as a purely fictional game in the novel by Patrick Rothfuss, The Wise Man's Fear. It had no formal rules, so you couldn't actually play it. Until now. James Ernest has partnered with the author to create the rules for the game, so join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, first decide on the size of your play area. The double-sided board that comes with the game will give you some different options. If you want to play a 6 by 6 game, you'll use all 36 of these diamonds on the board as spaces. Or, if you'd rather play a 5x5 five five game, use the full squares as spaces. To play 4x4, four four, go back to the diamonds, but ignore the outermost ring of them. And you can also play a 3x3 three three game using just these central squares. This other side of the board works the exact same way. Again, just decide which size you want to use as your boundaries. In this video, we're going to set up a 5 by 5 game, so we'll be using all of these squares. Each player now takes a certain number of stones and capstones in their chosen color based on the board size as shown here on the bottom of the screen. To play the larger listed 8x8 eight eight game, you'd need to have two sets. And just to be clear, these are the stones and these are the capstones. So for our game size, we'll have 21 stones and one capstone each, returning the rest of the pieces to the box. For your first game, decide randomly who will go first, but in future games, you should alternate back and forth. So let's say the brown pieces are going first. That player now takes one of their opponent's stones and places it flat, like this, on any empty space of the board or instead on an intersection if they were playing a differently sized boundary such as a 6x6 game. Again, we're playing 5x5, five five, so we'll stick to these spaces. Now the second player takes one of their opponent's pieces and also lays it flat on any empty space of the board. And that's the setup. Intact, the primary objective is for you to create a road of your connected pieces from any one side of the board to the opposite side. It doesn't have to be a straight line. It can be a meandering one, and we'll see examples of that, as well as the other couple of ways that you can win a little bit later. The game is played over a series of turns, starting with the first player and then alternating back and forth. And on your turn, you can perform one of two possible actions. One option is to place one of your own stones into any empty space on the board. Now, unlike during the setup, once the game begins, you'll only be placing your own stones. And these can either be put lying flat like this or standing upright. This is known as a flat stone and this is a standing stone. Flat stones count as part of your road. So if I had my stones lying out, let's say like this, then I would win the game as I have flat stones going from one side of the board all the way to the opposite side. Keep in mind, pieces are only connected if they share a full side with each other. Pieces that are diagonal to one another are not considered connected. So you would not have a winning road if your pieces were laid out like this. I should also point out that standing stones do not count as a part of your road. So again, even here, we wouldn't be winning. Standing stones can serve a valuable purpose though, as we'll see. With the place action, you can also bring your capstone into play, always upright, and we'll learn about its special features in just a moment. The other action that you can take on your turn, instead of placing a new stone, is to move a stack of pieces that you control. And a stack is any number of pieces in a single space, even if it's just one. And you control a stack if it's one of your pieces on top, whether it's laying or standing. But just keep in mind, you can never move in a diagonal direction. A common movement is with just a single piece, and in that case, you only move a single space. So from here, the white player could choose to move to this empty space. But when moving, you can also choose to go into a space with other pieces. So if the player instead went in this direction, they would put their piece on top. You can also move into a space with an opponent's pieces. And again, it doesn't matter how high the stack is, I can move in this direction and put my piece here. However, you cannot move onto a space with a standing piece. So if I was here, I could not move in this direction because this brown piece is blocking it. 
So just to be clear, when taking the place action, your new piece must go into an empty space. But by performing the move action, you can either move into an empty space or go into one with other pieces creating higher and higher stacks. When this happens, it is the flat pieces on top that continue to count towards roads. So if the board looked like this, the brown player would be the winner because they have their flat brown pieces on all of these stacks that go from one side of the board in a connected line all the way to the opposite side. Capstones are rare and powerful. They also count as a part of your road. So for example, if I had one sitting here, this would still be a completed connected road and one that would win the game. And these can also be moved to the top of stacks, so this would also be a winning road. However, capstones have another property. They're the one piece that can flatten standing stones. With a capstone that had been previously placed here, on the brown player's turn, they could move it towards this standing stone. This will knock it over, and then they place their piece on top. And like any other movement, the height of a stack doesn't matter. So if instead I chose to move in this direction, I would first knock over this piece and then jump all the way to the top. But when moving like this, you don't have to knock over stones. You can just move on to one that's already flattened. Or you can even flatten one of your own. So I could go in this direction, knocking this piece over, and then going on top. However, capstones themselves cannot be flattened. So with a capstone in this space, nothing can enter it, even another capstone. When using the move action, a player can also move a larger stack that they control, which will allow them to move further. Again, a stack you control is one where you have one of your pieces on top. Stacks can be built as high as you like, but when you go to move pieces from it, you can only carry a total number of pieces from the top equal to the width of the board. So in this 5x5 five five game, the brown player here could pick up at most five pieces, which is the carry limit though they could choose to pick up fewer. In a setup like this, white has a nice road going here, but let's see if brown can disrupt it. When moving a stack, you must go in a straight line without changing direction, but you can keep moving so long as you're able to drop off at least one piece in each space that you enter. So brown could pick up all five of these if they chose to and move in this direction. And they could keep moving as long as they leave at least one piece behind, but they could leave more. So let's drop off two here and then go to this position. Now, if they want to keep moving, again, they have to drop off at least one piece, which they'll do, and then go here, dropping off one more piece, and finally moving here. In a single move, the series of white pieces here have been totally covered up by brown's pieces, and they almost have a complete road except for this standing piece. Now, keep in mind, standing pieces like walls or capstones stop movement. So while the brown player was going in this direction, if instead there had been a wall here or a capstone, the movement would have had to stop in this position. They could not move any further. A capstone can travel with the stack that it's on top of, but it will not flatten pieces it comes across unless it moves into them all on its own. So for example, if I was moving a stack like this, I could go here. But if I only left one piece behind, I couldn't travel in this direction any further because the wall would block me. However, if I also left the white piece here behind, the capstone would be going on its own. So it would flatten this wall and end up in this space. So again, on your turn, you'll either place one of your stones from your supply onto the board in an empty space, or according to the carry limit, you can move a certain number of pieces from the top of the stack in a straight line. As soon as you create a connected road using just your flat pieces on the tops of stacks and or your capstones from one side of the board to the opposite side, you win immediately. In some rare cases, you might finish your road in such a way that it completes an opponent's road at the exact same time. For example, if the white player moved their pieces here, they now have a connected road from this side of the board all the way over to this side, but now so does the brown player. If this happens, it's the player who just completed their turn, in this case, the white player, that will win the game. But completing a road like this is not the only way you can win. If you take a place action on your turn and put your last piece on the board or fill in the last space of the board, the game ends immediately. And after checking to ensure no one has won by completing a road with that final piece, you'll stop and players now count up how many stacks they control where they have one of their flat pieces on top. 
The player with the most of those stacks is the winner. And if the count is a tie, then the game ends in a draw. In a friendly game, it's common to call tack. And that just means that you say tack out loud to your opponent anytime you're one turn away from winning the game. So the player with the white pieces, if they put one here, would say tack because on their next turn, they can move here, creating a connected road from one side of the board to the other, winning them the game. Also, since there's a slight advantage to being the first player in these games, it's a good idea to play multiple games and keep a running total score. Your score at the end of a match is equal to the size of the board. So in a five by five game, that's five times five for 25 points. And then the winner adds to that all of their remaining pieces in their personal supply. There's also some optional scoring variants, so let's go over those. For example, if the winning road is a straight line, then you can choose to have the winner score double for their remaining pieces. Or you can choose to double the score of a player's remaining pieces if they win without using their capstone. And finally, you can agree to double the score for a player's remaining pieces if their winning road is entirely made of stacks one piece high, like the brown players here, or triple the piece score if the winning road is made entirely of stacks with more than one stone each. Using any or all of the scoring variants is entirely up to you, but either way, you now know all of the rules for TAC. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.